Elliott, is now slated to miss games against the Kansas City Chiefs, Atlanta Falcons, Philadelphia Eagles, Los Angeles Chargers, Washington Redskins, and New York Giants. He is eligible to return December 17 against the Oakland Raiders. Fail presided over a status hearing Monday evening that spanned two hours. 46 people attended the hearing, which was held in a courtroom on the sixth floor of the U.S. District Court for the Southern District of New York in Lower Manhattan. While reasonable minds could differ on the evidentiary decisions made by the arbitrator, the proceedings in their totality accorded with the collective bargaining agreement and the personal conduct policy, and, to the extent such an inquiry applies, with precepts of fundamental fairness, Fela wrote in her decision. The arbitrator gave Mr. Elliott Temple opportunity, in terms of both proceedings and evidence, to challenge the commissioner's decision before the arbitrator. The arbitrator's ultimate decision against Mr. Elliott does not render these proceedings any less fair. Accordingly, the court dissolves the temporary restraining order that has been in place since October 17, 2017, and denies the Flip's motion. The NFL Players Association, which has been representing Elliott, can elevate the case to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals. Elliott was in attendance after rushing for 150 yards in a 33-19 victory over the Washington Redskins on Sunday. He made the trip up from the D.C. area and arrived to New York around 1 in the morning. He did, however, seem to be fending off fatigue. At various points, Elliot closed his eyes and appeared very close to dozing off. Fellow commanded the courtroom and set the tone from the start. I can appreciate the passion with which you have made your arguments, but there's certain rhetoric in your briefs that is not helpful to me, Fela said before hearing opening oral arguments. If you can excuse the spinal tap reference, if you could turn it down from an 11, that would be appreciated. Though Fela opened by asking both parties to not read into her line of questioning, she peppered NFL Players Association lead counsel Jeffrey Kessler with more questions than she did for NFL lead counsel Paul Clement. Fela often interrupted Kessler when he veered off topic. Fela's main concern with the union's case was its characterization as a conspiracy. Them's fighting words, Fela told Kessler. What I don't understand is who are the conspirators and where is this conspiracy? Fela described Kia Roberts, the NFL's director of investigations, as a key witness. While Roberts did testify in front of the NFL arbitrator that she had issues with the accusers and recommended against suspending Elliott, then Flippa has contended Goodell wasn't fully briefed on her concerns, something the NFL has repeatedly denied. Kessler said the perceived flaws in the league investigation, including Roberts not meeting with Goodell and the four experts, created a perfect storm of fundamental unfairness. At various points, Fela stopped Kessler and almost seemed to become annoyed at his occasionally long-winded arguments, many of which had already been outlined in previous briefs. Sir, I can read, Fela interrupted at one point. I don't need you to reiterate arguments you have already made in your briefs. I do want to hear from Mr. Clement. Clement said while Goodell had all the facts for his decision, Robert's recommendation on discipline is not required for the commissioner to issue suspension. It's in the personal conduct policy and he can seek it if he wishes, Clement said. He wanted to make his own decision on discipline. Kessler again argued Elliot would face irreparable harm by an unjust suspension. Then Flippa has argued for weeks that the ban was unjustified because the NFL's disciplinary process lacked fundamental fairness, including Elliot's inability to question the accuser or NFL commissioner Roger Goodell, and alleged contradictory evidence that was not considered. The NFL cited existing labor law and its ultimate victory in the suspension of New England Patriots quarterback Tom Brady in the Deflategate case, which stemmed from underinflated footballs in the 2014 AFC title game. That case, decided in the same district court where Elliott's case currently sits, was appealed to the Second Circuit Court of Appeals, where an appeals panel ruled that Goodell has brought authority to suspend players under the league's personal conduct policy included in the league's current collective bargaining agreement.